Here at Preaching Donkey, I've talked a lot over the years about outlining sermons, how to structure the best outline, to build tension, to drive your point home, to structure your sermon towards a next step and ultimately life change. But one of the things that we haven't talked about very much is something that some preachers use in their outlines, and it's a tool that can be used and it can be abused. It can be an, a helpful tool and it could be a terrible nightmare, and that is alliterations. Today in this episode, we're going to talk about how alliterations are almost always absolutely atrocious. We'll get into that in just a second. Before we do, I just want to say hi. If you're new here, my name is Lane. This is the Preaching Donkey Podcast. So grateful that you're joining us today. Be sure to go to preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days. You can pick up your free 21 day guide to creating killer sermons. It's a three week, three step process that I use to break down how to create and deliver a compelling message. It's totally free and whether you've been preaching for a long time or you've just got started and you're looking for resources that can help you, there's something in there for you. So go to preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days. All right, so let's take a look at this. This is an article that was one of the original articles that I wrote over at Preaching Donkey, why alliterated outlines are almost always absolutely atrocious. Some preachers alliterate their outlines, making all their points with the same letter. Sometimes just the main points are alliterated. Other times the sub points are alliterated. Still other times the sub sub points are alliterated. At one point, it was taught as a great way to organize your message and really get your listeners to remember to make it stick, alliterate was the mantra. But we don't see alliteration as much anymore. This has not necessarily gone away. It's just that you don't see the type of alliteration that I'm going to get into, the really problematic alliteration, as often as you used to. But it is still a temptation for a lot of preachers to do this, and there's a way to do it that works. And there's a way to do it that is more of a distraction than anything. We'll get into all of it. So does alliteration make a difference? Alliterate or not, does it matter? Here's why alliterated outlines are almost, almost always absolutely atrocious. <laughs> Number one, they make your message seem contrived. Alliterated outlines can appear contrived and forced. Like the preacher just needed a matching neat outline. So he grabbed whatever word fit the others, regardless of whether it was actually the best word that communicated the meaning he wanted. Like this, God wants three things from you. So here's an example outline where this could go wrong, right? So the, the kind of header is God wants three things from you. Number one, surrender. Number two, service. Number three, supplication, <laughs> okay? Surrender, common word, right? Service, another common word supplication is just a stretch. It's just trying to find a word that starts with an S that means prayer, right? So prayer would work just fine here. More people would automatically know what it means. So again, I think you don't want a message outline to seem contrived, to seem fake, to seem like you're trying to force a square peg into a round hole. So in this situation, supplication just seems like uh, too much, right? You have to explain to most people what that means. And I think when it comes to your messages and it comes to communicating clearly, if you have to explain your outline, you're already losing, right? Sometimes the text has to be explained. Sometimes you read a passage, it's a little difficult to understand and you have to explain it. Your outline is designed to do the explaining for you. The way you structure your bottom line, your supporting points, all of that is supposed to make the text applicable and clear to show how the text is understood and how it is applied. So if your outline also requires explanation, you might wanna rethink it. And this is not just when it comes to alliterations, it's anything in your outline. But if you've got surrender, service, supplication, you might as well say surrender, service, and prayer because you have to explain what supplication means to most people. Now, I know it's a word that's in the Bible. It depends on the translation. One of my favorite places 
where it is is a verse called Philippians 4, 6 and 7, 6, 7 and 8. Paul says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. So in that case, he's not just talking about prayer. It's a type of prayer that's more of a begging, a petitioning. In that case, sure, use the word supplication. But if what you're going for here is really just, he wants you to surrender, he wants you to serve, and he wants you to pray, just use the word pray. That's all I'm saying. So they, they can make it seem contrived. Number two, some alliterations can seem crowded and overly complicated. I... I've read public commentaries that teach pastors how to alliterate several words in a line and make each subsequent line a parallel matching line, okay? So it might look something like this, and I heard this from a real sermon that I heard once. A genuine disciple is committed to a pure life, consistent in their personal life, constrained by the purpose of life, and convinced of their position in life. Okay, so we've, we have C, P, L, C, P, L, C, P, L, C, P, L, right? In addition to seeming painfully contrived, this is a complicated mess to navigate through. If we can learn any, for anything from companies like Google, right? Simplicity rules the day. A worded, crowded, a, a wordy, crowded, alliterated outline makes it difficult to navigate what is most important for your listeners to remember. And this is what is is very, very important. What we just read here, committed to a pure life, consistent in my personal life. Some of these things are really powerful things to teach, but they can be very difficult to remember. Okay, was it consistent in the purpose of life or was it constrained by my personal life? Like what, what was, it? it's just too much. It's too much to communicate. Any one of those would make a fine bottom line, but when they're all listed in this kind of outlined, everything matches and everything is perfectly put together, it might make us feel good, but as a communication tool, it's not very rememberable, not very memorable because it's too much and it, it's, it's overly complicated. It's too, much to, it's too much to understand and communicate. So they can seem crowded and overly complicated. If you look at the, the move towards simplicity in just about everything, uh, you, you can kind of see where a lot of people just long for simplicity. I heard it once said that where there is overwhelm, there is opportunity. Your people, when they come to church on a Sunday, are overwhelmed with everything coming at them. What you're trying to do is take the complexity of scripture and show them how it is simply and daily applied to their life. And one of the things that works against that is when your outline is overly complicated and forced alliteration is one of the ways that that happens. Number three, they do not communicate authenticity. This is because it doesn't seem like a real conversation. So I've talked in previous episodes about conversational preaching, how important it is to preach like you're having a conversation, like someone's sitting there talking to you. We don't speak to each other in neat, alliterated sentences, right? We don't. So as a preacher delivering a sermon, you have to work hard to seem connected to your audience. Don't make this harder on yourself by developing an outline that doesn't seem real, right? So I really love for my outlines to seem conversational in the same way that my preaching seems conversational and the sermon seems conversational so that it feels like a conversation right? Where most of life is actually lived. Now, every rule has an exception. So we said that they make the message seem contrived. They can seem crowded and overly complicated. They do not communicate authenticity. Those are all things that you, you run the risk of. However, every rule has an exception. So alliteration is not technically the problem. Overuse of alliteration and forced alliteration is the problem. Sometimes it can be very helpful to use alliteration. Oftentimes it is a huge distraction. For me, what makes a difference, and this is huge, for me what makes a difference is whether memorizing it will help your listeners when they walk away. If memorizing the outline is not something that would help them, there is no need to alliterate, and this is a great rule. So for example, if you were preaching on three ways God wants us to love him, right, your outline could be head, heart, hands. God wants you to love him with our minds, our head. He wants us to, he wants our full emotions, our heart. 
and he wants us to serve him with our hands. It's a simple and it's simple and could be used very useful to your listeners. So in other words, instead of just saying God wants you to love him with your mind and your heart and to serve him, you might want to, or in, I'm sorry, instead of saying God wants us to love him with our minds, with our full emotions and to serve him, if you say head, heart, hands, it's a full picture and because it's alliterated, it makes it a little bit easier to remember, right? Our, our head, okay, I want, to, I, want to, I want the mind of Christ my heart, right? I want to feel, I want the full emotions, my whole being submitted and connected to God. And then my hands, what I, what I, put, what I put my hands to do to work, I want that to be serving God. People can walk away from your message and have that in their minds and be able to remember. And in that case, it's a very, very useful tool. But this can be overused too, and if done too much or in a forced way, it can also be a distraction. So I'm not care so I'm careful not to use something like that too much. So again, some of these things are just making sure that your preaching is a balanced effort of making sure that what you're communicating and how you're communicating it is purposeful. And that's really the point. The point is not anti-alliteration or pro-alliteration. The point is everything we do as preachers needs to be geared towards removing as many distractions as possible so that people can hear the word of Christ and helping people see how the scripture plays out in real life so that they can take it and do something with it. They can be changed. They can be made into a disciple who makes disciples. That's the goal of preaching, life change. So if alliteration works towards that goal, then absolutely go for it. If it works against it or if it's neutral, it's better to stay away from it in favor of something that's more simple and communicated more clearly. Those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments below. If you are watching on YouTube, if you're listening on one of the podcast players, thank you so much for listening. Be sure to leave a five-star review. Definitely go over to preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days. Grab your free guide there and I will see you in the next episode real soon. Until then, remember, if God can speak through a donkey, he can speak through you and he can speak through me. We'll see you next time here at the Preaching Donkey Podcast.